I'm your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Rock on! Woohoo! And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Insert social interaction here. Um, um, don't worry, I won't control your mind. Oh, that sounds kinky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it. <clears throat> wow, I cannot do that. I wonder how she does it. <laughs> I am not... You do it like this, and you have to sound like the most monotone thing on the planet. Not me. Like you I'm... don't care. I I care you, a you lot. You could say you you could say Norman that you'd be stoned. Oh no, I'm not. But anywho, <laughs> as you guys at home might have guessed, we're doing Rock Solid Friendship Season Seven Episode Four. So anywho. In this episode, Mod Pie considers moving to Ponyville after graduating from geology school, and Pinkie Pie tries to help her see that the town has more to offer than just rocks. Geology. So, geology? What did I say? Geology. Something like that. <laughs> did you sound like Jerry Lewis in pain? It's like, oh, geology! <laughs> Uh, but, but anywho, first impressions are in order, and Silver, what do you think, man? Oh, I greatly enjoyed this episode. I mean, the unexpected friendship between Maud and Starlight was probably the highlight. Just expanding Starlight's circle of friends, giving Maud a chance to think things over. The only downer for me is Pinky when she beca- when she oversells it. There's only so far a character can go before they start to wear on your nerves. And that's Pinky for you. Like, remember in A Friend Indeed? She really got on Cranky's nerves. So, yeah, that's normal for her. And I, I empathized with Cranky for a while. Yeah, poor Cranky. Not a fun time there. Like, yeah, I wanted to be alone just so he can brood. But nope, nope, nope. Uh, but still. Anything to add, Sil? Pinky doesn't mean mod impersonation? Yes, better than what I can do. But the rest can wait for the actual review. Yeah. Indeed. So, Seppi, what about you? Aesthetically, characterize, and other, um, you know, if you know me very well, then you know this episode appealed to me very much. It's an episode centered around Mod Pie. You get this beautiful friggin' scenery of Ponyville adjacent, and plus you get, like, character interactions between Starlight and Mod, and I don't know, after this episode... Starlight kind of became one of my most relatable characters ever. <laughs> like, I, I relate to Starlight so much after this episode. And Maud. I'll get into, like, the whole character development with Maud later and why she's into, um, you know, rocks and minerals later. But there's a specific quote in the middle of the episode that just made my heart soar, and I love this episode so much. Pinky, though... <sighs> It's Pinkie Pie, but at the same time, I'm agreeing with Silver on the fact that Pinkie Pie was a bit overplayed this episode. Hmm, alright, alright, alright. And as for me, I like this episode. I like this episode a lot. It's one of those episodes where you can watch it multiple times and still enjoy and find new things. And just seeing the interaction between the three leads here, it's just fun. Like... How Mod and Starlight here are just, they don't know each other that well, but within time they bond, silently bond, like how real men do. <laughs> and Pinky is just Pinky, like she just bounces around and stuff. Even though, how do I put this? The interaction between Mod and Starlight here is just rock solid, pun intended. <laughs> Oh, you never want to take rock puns for granted. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, they're they're very sedimental. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, you need a rock solid uh, structure to structure out some kind of joke with them. Exactly. It will leave you shale and hearty. <laughs> uh, rock puns. I'm not good with them. You just got to keep rolling with it. Uh, but hey, anywho, if you guys at home have not watched this episode yet, pause it here and enjoy the episode. Welcome back. 
So we start off with Mark graduating from the rock school. Geology. <laughs> geology school. And apparently she's the only student there. Or could be the only one for that semester. I, I, I don't know. How does one afford such a prestigious building with only one student? Then again, Trixie had amazing pay from working on a rock farm. Oh, true that. But at the same time, too, if you really ask the question, where are the other teachers? I remember graduating and there were a lot more other people at the stage. But that's me. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. My graduations, well, they've always been interesting. Yes, there were many, many teachers present, but only a few of them really did anything. I'm sure the others were like, ah, we do this every couple of years. It's so boring. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, I have no idea how teachers feel at that. But I understand. I mean, I've only had my high school graduation to live off of. And even then, my uncle decided to become uh, bulk biceps during that day. (laughs) I'm yeah. serious. My my, I I could hear up in the distance while they were sitting at the top of the place where I was graduating. Um, as I was walking down the island, I uh, not island aisle. I suddenly <laughs> heard a yeah. I heard a manly yeah. Like oh god, no. I know I'm a brony, but my god, why? References. That raises the question, what would an unmanly yes? And like, no! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Uh, but talking about the yays, uh, it seems that Pinkie Pie's <laughs> Safi's uncle. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, How is that possible? She's so high, bouncing around, hugging people, just really, really excited for her mod, and also proud of her. Uh, and so is every member of the Pi family. It's good to see them there too. So yay. That's awesome. Oh, Marple, you have no idea how irrelevant you're about to become. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Marple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, the shippers are angry. I can't help you guys there. Oh, boys. <laughs> uh, well, Limestone is Limestone. Ignis and Quartz, was it? I don't remember the father Ignis- of his name. Ignis uh, and uh, Smoky Quartz. Let me yeah. look it up. I think Cloudy it was Cloudy Cloudy Quartz. Quartz. Yeah. Ignis and Cloudy. Well, they're, they're proud of their daughter. So, long story short, everybody's happy. Speech, high five with Boulder. We go to intro and we see that the initial plan for Mod is to check out Ponyville to see if Ponyville or Ghastly Gorge is the right place to stay and do her research. I wonder if this continues on her studies for her master's or doctorate, or she's just doing this for fun. Again, I don't think she has to worry about finances. I'm just going to roll with the idea that Pinky's family is exceedingly rich, but that their their puritanical lifestyle makes them live humbly. Because, mm-hmm. good gravy, they never seem to be lacking for the cash. And Pinky can spend it like no one's business. Party, party, party. Do you think all those confettis, balloon, and cake are bought with hopes and dreams? I think he must be getting paid in some regard. I mean, my goodness. Although this is a question, I wouldn't be surprised if hopes and dreams were a currency. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hopes and dreams. Hey, what's this you're trying to push on me, buddy? You're trying to pay me with political hopes? Hey, don't you know what era we're living in? (laughs) Aye. Oh, boys. But anywho, <laughs> back on to the train. Pinky's excited because Mott is going to stay in Ponyville. Not really. She's just thinking of it. But still, Pinky interprets it as staying in Ponyville and she'll have her big best sister. What was the phrase? BB, uh. BBBSS? Something like that. I think I saw it on the wiki right. page. Oh, yes. BSFF. Best sister's friends forever. <laughs> ah. I was going to say, kinky. Oh my, you. But anywho, they arrive in Ponyville and the first thing that they do is visit the rock caves. Remember this cave? I sure don't. I do. Really? That's where, 
That's where uh, Spike and Rarity were together, and he started glowing at the at the beginning of Dragon. Is it called Dragon Quest? No, that was later. Oh, the one where Spike Ember was introduced. Oh, uh, uh, Gauntlet of Fire. Yeah. Gauntlet, thank you. Thank oh. you. That's, I believe Rarity and Spike were there, and they, here as then, Rarity looks adorable in a mining hat with a bow on it. I yeah. know. Okay, now I remember that episode. Yeah. I want a hugger. <laughs> oh, you can get a plush of her with that mining hat. <laughs> no thanks. Uh, but you know what? Yeah, now I remember that. Now I remember. Although if we're gonna quibble over logistics, then one must ask: What in the hay happened to Rarity's horn? Uh, it's under it's like, the helmet. It's like concave right now. Gotta be. It's so she takes it off. She's got to like pl- plug up her nose and blow, and <laughs> just comes right out. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe. It's inside the flashlight or whatever it is. I, I don't know. Norman, I think it's wonderful that you're trying to explain this, but sometimes it defies <laughs> all logic. Oh, uh, yeah. But still, if you if you see the flashlight, she ha- it has a magical aura around it when she lifts the gemstone. But that's explaining aside. Uh, one thing I need to mention about this whole scene before they meet Rarity is that the theme for this episode is audio cues. When they visit the caves, there's this uh, harpsichord kind of music or chime that makes everything sound so grand or mystical or ah and elegant is the yes, word thank you're you. w- looking for. Yes, yes, elegant. And you see Pinky in the background playing the harp, so it's like, oh, okay, that's a funny cue. And then you get to see uh, Mon's interaction with Rarity, and they two have been... Well, I think this is the second time that they... No, this is the third time that they meet in the cartoon, but I think this would be the fourth time overall if you include the comics. But it's also kind of a requirement at this stage. I think uh, ever since we got hit with that wonderful line, it doesn't talk its address. <laughs> the writers just need to have Maud interact with Rarity, even if it's just for a scene. Oh, yeah. And I, I just like, Rarity's line is, oh, what are you doing now? In the general sense of, you finish your study, so what are you going to do now? And I'm talking to you. <laughs> uh, somewhere in my head, it's like, Maud is just a jokester, like Pinky, but the way she tells jokes is that pen. It's so monotone that you don't know if she's joking or if she's serious. Uh, we know she can give sick burns, a la Discord. I know. Uh, and she does stand up too, remember that? <laughs> but still, getting back on track, uh, the pony's interaction here is just too good. And, well, <laughs> Rarity asking for help to look for a rare gem, and Mod just sets out says that every gem in this cave is common. She even shows us that the rock that Rarity thinks is rare, there are a bunch of them in this one side. <laughs> and uh, the visual gag here is Rarity checks every gem in her basket and just <laughs> sits at one side and cries over them. <laughs> Way to go, Mod. You, you made Rarity cry. Yep. <laughs> so anything else to add before we head off to the castle? Well, we we can say that Pinky has added another checkmark to her repertoire. First there was a big fuzz felt checkmark, now there's a crystalline checkmark. Oh, yep. Two checks there. So let's see if we will get another check in the movie. <laughs> so you're saying she's double checking? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> uh, Seppi, you're good? Yeah. I I is good. All righty then. So, Crystals! Okay, I'm good. All right. So we jump off right to the Castle of Friendship, where Mod is not impressed by this. <laughs> Join the club, sister. <laughs> Just, <laughs> like, at least be impressed that it's a castle made out of crystals. But <laughs> Mod here has the best line where Pinky just says that the castle is made out of rocks. 
small justice is a very viable building structure, very solid building structure or something like that. And Pinky just goes, yeah. I don't know. Surely the the tree of friendship didn't, uh, or what was it? The tree of harmony didn't skimp on materials. I mean, oh god, what if the what if the tree of harmony is a union construction worker? <laughs> I don't hey, know. I'll, I'll get to I'll get to build them the the other wings later. But you know, I'm on break right now. <laughs> well, well, I I can at least say this. At least the whole entire thing wasn't made out of nuggets. <laughs> Nuggets. Just nuggets of friendship. <laughs> uh, if anybody in this who's watching um this podcast gets this reference, you get a cookie. <laughs> uh, but honestly, my theory here with the castle could be that the castle used materials that's around it. So if crystals were involved, they could be from the crystal caves. So yeah. They're common. They're pretty common. <laughs> if it was in a location where there were uh, rare materials, then probably they used that. Viable? No? I don't know. I, I was just reading the transcript and Maud said, we saw lots of rocks like this back in the cave. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently the, the Tree of Harmony did just use what it had on hand. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm, a, I'm omnipotent, but I'm paid by the hour. <laughs> Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah, so Pinky desperately trying to impress Maud here just points at whatever and says that they're rocks from the bushel uh pot seeds, whatever uh, not really re- reading the transcript for this one. But from Tony seeds to tank to even Lyra. I just like the interaction with this one. <laughs> well I, I I like Bon Bon. It's like, hey, hands off my the lady. She's yeah. with me. Hands off my waifu! <laughs> yeah. Oh, Pinkie Pie just stealing Lyra and saying, hey, this is a rock shape, looks like Lyra. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I, yeah, if I were Bon Pon, I'd be that way too, except there'd be lots of murder, like, stay away from my common! <laughs> oh. And with that failing, Pinkie Pie's deflated, literally. And, well, Mod explains that there's more to rocks, actually. She wanted to find some friends and try to, well, interact with other beings besides boulder and rocks. So, the the best line out of the show is probably someone... What was it? Again, give me a second. And the line is, You never know when the lightning of friendship will strike. Some pony could come barreling through that door at this very moment and become your best friend. Any minute now. Yep. Any Any minute minute. now. (laughs) Uh, I I like comedic timing like this. It's self-referential. It's something that would happen in this show. But, (laughs) yeah, no, no, no. Uh, we, we, We kind of skipped over a duality. Oh, one. There's Pinky's adorable face when she hears that Maud wants to have a friend. I mean, you know, hooves on her cheeks, eyes just filling up most of her face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, she looks so thrilled, and then she grabs a clipboard from her uh, mane <clears throat> and coughs up a pencil. That I don't want to think about. Where, I don't want to think about where that pencil's been. Oh no, that can't be healthy. And she's just carrying that around in her in her stomach. Have you seen Movie Magic, the Equestria Girl special? She grabbed that pudding and just slip it through her hair. Like, yeah. I, I know the phrase, don't question what Pinky's doing, or just don't question what Pinky does in general, but that was not healthy. Well, what can we say about the Pinkster? She, uh, I've, I've long accepted she has Marge Simpson TARDIS-like hair. <laughs> yep. But coughing up a pencil. Yep. <laughs> you know what? Not gonna even... Uh, nah, 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 nah. So, with the comedy gods on Pinky's side, Starlight barrels through the door and smack dabs into Maud. And, well, Starlight here seems to recognize Maud. Like, they've met before, but from where... And Maud explains the whole situation or the whole memory of the meeting. And oh boy, 
Their meeting is, um, Seppi, you want to do this? Yes. <clears throat> uh, do you know a lot about rocks? Yes. Have you ever come across some kind of super powerful stone that can sort you mark magic in, oh, I don't know, an entire village? Yep, in the big cave. And that's how in- Mod invertedly helps Starlight and save the entire, enslave the entire village. Oops. <laughs> I'd like to start a trend where Mod is secretly the the downfall of Equestria several times over. <laughs> like, I always wondered how did Tyrik know about Princess Cadence but not Princess Twilight? Well, he bumped into Mod on his way out from Tartarus. Hello, young child. Do you know where I can find you know? Alicorn ponies that are powerful. They're up in the Crystal Empire with Princess Cadence, who's the third alicorn of the line. Ah, yes. Sorry, go ahead. Ah, yes, good. Thank you, young child. I'll suck you last. I mean, thank you, young child. I'll be heading off now. If you say you're going to suck... Let's not tell anybody the part where, oh, maybe for sure you accidentally helped the starlight enslave a town. (laughs) <laughs> Tell no pony. <laughs> I love this one. I love that moment. Uh. It's not like she's enslaved any pony lately. <laughs> she said uh. to the brainwashed Pinkie Pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I forgot about that one. <laughs> I love this show. This show is fun. But anywho, but anywho, um, Pinky asks Mod or tells Mod to help Starlight with whatever she's doing. And well, they hit off. Uh, they go to the market and they share a moment. Yeah, the, the line here is, Rock takes on different properties when interacting with magic. With the right stone, you could rule all of Equestria if you wanted to. It's like, hmm, Mod here, are, are you even serious? Like... Oh, it's hard to read you. And with that, their friendship bloom. And that's where my headcanon of making rocks do magic things came to light. Yay. One. And yeah, the interaction is good. And Starlight here shares a secret with Maud. She likes kites. Really, really like kites. Gasp! <laughs> uh, that was Starlight who likes kites, not Maud. What did I see? Mm, you you, I think you, you said Mod likes kites. It's like, no, that was Starlight. I thought I say Starlight. But you know what? No. Either or, everybody knows that Starlight likes kites. Really, really like kites. And they share a moment. Suddenly, pizza delivery from Pinkie Pie. What? I didn't know they had pizza in Ponyville. Oh, that they had those hats. Uh, true that. Pizza hat. Ha <laughs> ha. Although it's not a bad idea. Grab a pizza and watch Starlight's favorite movie, Kite Runner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Oh, we, there, there is a Papa Pizza Pony in Ponyville. It's not really? canon, though. Oh. Yeah. Well, if it's not <sighs> canon, then it's something else. But... Jasper Pie. Do you not know of the Uncle Jasper? Uh, no, not really. Not my end. I'll introduce you later. But anywho. It seems that Pinky here is trying to spy on the two friends and saying that the pizza delivery is for Muffin Pony. Yay. <laughs> oh, wow. She's, she's so accepting. I mean, someone just threw a pizza at her head and she's just like, oh, pizza. Hey, it's free pizza. It's free pizza. But I don't want freeze pizza. Free. Well, warm. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just giving you a bad time. Oh, you. I but want any- pizza. Can I have mine with mushroom, spinach, and pineapple? Sure. Yay! Mushroom, spinach, and pineapple. Now, there's a combo I've not yet heard. Well, that's what I want. (laughs) Well, I'm not pretty adventurous with my pizzas. I'm pretty vanilla. Ooh, vanilla on your pizza. That'd be interesting. Well, technically, there's a... It can. Like, technically, there's a dessert pizza instead of, you know, the tomatoes, cheese, and whatchamacallit. Cookie um, pizza. Yeah, true that. You know what? I'll explain about the pizza dessert later if anyone's interested. But the ponies here or the characters here are just 
interacting and heading off to somewhere else to be away from Pinky. And now it's Maud's turn to explain her fascination with rocks and why they, why she likes them. And Starlight here kind of agrees and explains or just states out the obvious to Maud, but not us, which is they're beautiful and strong, but they don't judge you or make you feel less than in any way. That sounds good to me. I mean, you know, people people find meaning in various things. And it's nice when they can articulate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, that was my favorite part, like, during that episode. Like, it was nice. I, I like that part. And, well, they found some kind of hidden passageway to the Batcave. Da-da-da-da! And, wow, it's very beautiful. Especially that T-Rex and the big giant coin there. Wow. What are you doing in my lobby? <laughs> Why do you want a pony? <laughs> oh, boy. That's so cute. Oh, wait, maybe I should instead do the Lego Batman. Okay, look, you're not dark enough. I need your ponies to be black or perhaps <laughs> lightish, darkish gray. Oh, oh wow. Mart, you, you fit the bill, but you, Starlight, you need to be darker. More brooding of the backstory. Yep. And As if enslaving ponies wasn't dark enough. And of course, we can always go, but we can always fall back on our uh, podcast about Superman oh, the Elite and have Bat Trump. <laughs> I wasn't there. Oh, I'm Bat Trump. I'm the most fantastic superhero ever. Bat Trump. But oh no, don't play it. Bat Trump. Oh, down no. the toilet, oh. Bat Trump. I know. Do- I defeat criminals with my super tweeting powers. They're fantastic. <laughs> you know, Silver, um, I still like asked or uh, commented that he's surprised that you didn't do Super Trump. Well, that's super because Trump. Super Trump is sad. Super it's just Trump. sad. Super Trump, Super Trump, Super Trump. Uh, done, 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 done. <clears throat> His throne uh. is a toilet. Oh, God. Uh, but anywho, Silver, you want to take this one? Oh, what? It's that they discover an underground cave of awesomeness? Yep, and also... And, and they discover that Pinkie Pie has been stalking them this whole time. Uh, yeah. Making them flash blind, which was probably yeah. one of the one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> yeah, those eyes. Those, those eyes. eyes. Can we just stay in paradise and just stare at the scenery? And imagine ourselves in that scenery because it looks so great. I don't know. I think I get claustrophobic. I don't know how I do underground. I would stay there forever if that were my place. <laughs> so does Doggo. But then Pinky, I do love how overt Pinky is when she decides that they need to spend even more time together. <laughs> so, oh dear, she's stumbling towards the conveniently placed uh, explosive charge. That's cooked up to block off the cave. Oh, I've trapped us all underground without food or water. Seriously, don't trust an underground aquifer. <laughs> uh, true that. And you know what? Boulder to the rescue! Honestly, ba, 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 this, ba, ba. <laughs> this could have been interpreted in so many ways. A, Mod just threw Boulder up to the ceiling, or B, Boulder just jumped toward the ceiling. Like, what? <laughs> But it's about this time that Pinky's really starting to wear out the joke. Yep, yep. And I think it's about time too because, well, near this point, the whole joke kind of grinding at our feelings, not word, that's not feeling, I'm grinding at our nerves, yes. It's getting a bit It's old. grinding my gears. Yep, yep. And yeah, it's also grinding on uh, Starlight and Mod's gears too. And I just like how Mod here is like, oops, it looks like the cowbell fell. <laughs> but you know what this scene needs? Adorable pajamas? Nah, you need more cowbells! It needs more cowbells! Uh, that doesn't ready? ring a bell. Oh, who's that guy's name? Christopher Watkins in that SNL skit. I need more cowbell! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's let's watch Will Ferrell friggin' swish his belly around. Oh god, no! As he tries to put in the more cowbell. Oh god, no! But anywho, 
uh, it comes at night and yeah, like Silver said, we need more ponies in pajamas. That's cute. Like, that's a huge onesies. Can't I just wear socks? No, this is a PG show. No. But socks! What's so bad about socks? Oh, no, 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 no. But anywho, the way that Pinky, you know what? I think DWK said it best. <laughs> I'm not even going to repeat what he says. Uh, and Pinky goes to bed with that one note look and wakes up the same way to discover that Mott has left her for Gasly Gorge. Oh no. I know, but also I'm impressed that Pinky has the clapper. The clap? <laughs> Yay! Clap oh. on. Clap off. <laughs> clap on, clap off. The clapper. Wait, is that really how the ad goes? It clap is. Clap uh, on, clap off. Sorry. It is, uh, it's just like head on, applied directly to the forehead. It's so annoying <laughs> that it gets stuck in your memory. <laughs> oh, wow. So, Pinky discovers Maud's gone and goes up to Maud in her bed early in the morning. Oh, you mean Starlight? Yeah, sorry. Starlight in early in the morning and asking why could you not both be friends? Oh, you two are the but worst. We were friends, you dense little ray. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Long story short, Maud and Starlight here hit it off really well, and just because of Pinky's interference that they didn't, well, Mott felt like she's being suffocated, and yeah, wanted to be away from Pinky for a while. My favorite part is, like, Pinky's so taken back by, like, you know, you were kinda in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, okay, how do I put this nicer? Um, you got in our way? <laughs> <laughs> Screw oh. this, I'm going back to bed. Yeah, yeah I, lo- I love it. She, she's broken Pinky's heart. She's like, well, I'm just going to turn over and try and sleep away by sadness. <laughs> yeah, but still, but still, Mon and Star like here really hit it off pretty well. And I do like their interactions. But yeah, Pinky. Pinky had to ruin it all. Mm-hmm. Pinky, and, you had to ruin it all. Yep. You had to ruin it all, Pinky. But with that, Pinky goes to Gasly Gorge to apologize to Maud. And talking about Maud, we see that she's collected a few rocks, set up camp, and also find an Emerald Jasper. Wow, that's lucky of her. Mm-hmm. What could ever go wrong? What indeed? Mm-hmm. Uh, Pinky goes to the gorge and finds Maud in the mouth of an eel, a quarry eel. Yay, call back to way back when. Um, best pet ever? Dun, 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 uh, may the best dun, pet win. Dun, yes, may the best pet win. Dun, 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 and I'm surprised that Fluttershy could fly that far. Impressive. Fluttershy, she's determined. Or she t- they took the balloon. Who knows? Yeah, probably. And with eel chase later, Pinky says she's sorry. And, well, she's tried to not get in the way. Well, I think we, we, we missed one important fact. Pinky provides one jacked up rescue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and by jack up rescue, it's really a jack. Wow. And did she put it off her hair? And then she she sacrificed that for for Maud. She wound up with Jack. Oh no, it's you don't know Jack. Jack. Uh, like I mentioned before, Pinky here says she's sorry, and Maud here says that. What did Maud say? Like, I, I I totally forgot. Well, basically, she said, "I don't belong in Ponyville. She's better off by herself," which is kind of a vulnerable thing to say. Mm-hmm. And I do love that they, they're making fun of the dangling off the clip emotional <laughs> reunion trope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because nobody tends to... Well, I'm surprised that Pinky doesn't look down, but yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't look down to see if it's safe or not. Um, what did, and it says, this way, follow me. <laughs> so I, I think... Uh, what was this? Yeah, like, Mort here... She wants to be with Pinky, but still wants her independence in some shape or form. 
and also want to make friends her own way and doesn't need help from Pinky. And yeah, with that, Mod decides to head back to Ponyville and tells Boulder that they're packing up. Boulder here is chopping wood and has the lumberjack hat on. I know, he's trying to grow a beard, but it just ain't working. I know. It's actual peach fuzz. <laughs> oh, wow. But in all, in all honesty, Boulder here is a confusing, confusing character. Is he living? If Is he not? What is he? All we know is he's 2,000 years old, but still. Well, I figure Ma just put him in an adorable hat next to a, next to a axe. There you go. You would think so. You would think so. But knowing this world, <laughs> we all know that Tom the Rock can roll on his own. So what, what of Boulder here? Wait. The only time Tom the actual boulder has rolled on his own is when I animated him. What you going <laughs> yep. on about, sir? <laughs> yep, referencing to your video, which people should see. <laughs> Making all kinds of crazy. <laughs> and then uh, the Mohan comes in. What kind of video, Silver? I didn't see that. Uh, Seriously, I don't remember which video that was. I don't remember Tom could be, rolling. <laughs> could it hey. be After the Facts, Brotherhood Social that is on Silver Quill's channel that is recently uh, uploaded? Yeah. <laughs> when did that part come in? <laughs> Yesterday. Today. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I mean like at the beginning, in the middle, I didn't catch it is, that part. It is the very, very end. It is... My character getting trampled by everything in creation. Oh, I skipped over it so I could watch, so I could be part of this review. Legas, you skipped over my review, Safi. No, I skipped over the part where people were trampling you. Oh my. Heresy, you will witness my pain. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, but anywho, back in Ponyville. <laughs> but Silver, I love you, I don't want to see you in pain. <laughs> oh my. Ah, uh, but uh, anywho, back on to the uh, review. If it's like Fifty Shades of Grey okay. love, then you want to witness people. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, nah. no. Fifty Shades uh, of Quill. Oh god, no. But anywho. No. <laughs> but anywho. I mean, I'm into that, but no, gross. Oh god. <laughs> and, uh, god. What? 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 what mm. <laughs> This I've... is what happens when you start with the kinky stuff at the beginning, Norman. No, uh, no, no. We're, come on, we're, we're almost breaking Norman. It's, it's perfect. Uh, but We've any... almost got him whipped. <laughs> oh, let's keep going then. Oh, God, no. But anywho, back in Ponyville, we see Mott and Starlight here flying a kite and getting along and them interacting and don't need to share their feeling because they know what they want because they're best friends. And Mod inviting Starlight to decorate her new crib, which is the cave adjacent Ponyville. So yeah, welcome to cribs. <laughs> pimp my crib, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, let's pimp my ride. Pimp flip flip. Flip. flip my ride. <laughs> Why not? Oh God. I'm actually a little worried about Maud's new digs. She, sure, it looks beautiful, but you're I camping want out. To live there. But you're camping out right next to a waterfall, which means you're really going to want to have to use the bathroom a lot. <laughs> I want to live there. And I'm looking at that. I'm looking at that mushroom in the bottom left corner. I'm thinking that looks hallucinogenic. I want to live there. Don't be mean to that mushroom. Maybe it'll give you one up. Is that what they're calling it these days? <laughs> Can I live there, Silver? Well, if you if you're fine with no indoor plumbing, oh, you okay. can go all natural, and the entire okay. and the constant steady rush of water just going over and over and over. That'd be great, actually. And you get hungry and you try a mushroom, but next thing you know, you're you <laughs> you're in New York with without any pants on. You're like, whoa, what did I just do? <laughs> Nobody well, ever said I couldn't leave the place. Oh well. But anywho. Uh Pinky comes. Um she's sorry that she barged in, didn't mean to um ruin the moment, and well, episode ends. The end. Yay. 
And so let's go on to the final thoughts. Silver, what do you think, man? Oh, this was a lot of fun episode. Uh, Maud was an unexpected and I think breakaway character from season four. And so they've made an effort to include her every little whip stitch with good reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's a good idea that she's adjacent to Ponyville, but not necessarily, uh, we're not going to see her in the background. She's not going to, she's good in small doses. And giving her a friend in Starlight Glimmer shows that, you know, it enables Starlight to become more of her own character. She has connections. She has her own gathering. But I realize Starlight has made friends with a, an outcast unicorn, a socially awkward earth pony. How long until the lightning dust becomes her best bud? Oh, wow. That will be awesome. And also, you need to remember that she's friends with Discord and also Torex. So, yeah, that's something to consider. And Sunset Shimmer. Oh, uh, yeah, the Shim Shams. Oh. Shim Sham and the Glam Glam. That's something. But I say that's not fair, really, because Sunset here is friends with Starlight and Twilight, so... Yes, they are friends, and you will accept it. Yeah, but... Accept it! Well, now you guys are just sounding like a Yu-Gi-Oh! bridge. So... <laughs> oh, no, friend me! Friend me all over! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Yugi, friend me right in my face! <laughs> Oh God! Fifty shades of Taya. Oh God! <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, Silver, so you, you done yet? No, I didn't think you, so, right? Oh, not even close. Oh, you want to stick that card for you? <laughs> oh God! I mean, with the uh, your thoughts. Oh gosh! Oh no, I'm I'm done with the review. My mind's going far darker places now. <laughs> okay, then, Seppi, what do you think of said episode? Well, I've already said my thoughts, but I'm claiming it right here. Ahem. I claimed the collab with Silver on this episode. <laughs> yeah, I'll be safe and say 10 years in advance. <laughs> wow, that long. Eh? Uh, hey, knowing Silver, it takes him like one year in order to get out a whole entire episode review. Oh. <laughs> so I'm I'm claiming 10 years in advance just to be safe. I am claiming my collab spot with this episode. I, I love that she's she's just declaring this. So that at no point did she said, Silver, do you want to collab? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you want to do a collab? I'm totally not ripping off and gross. That's good, because I'm here as her attorney and here to subpoena you. You're, un- <laughs> you're to suit for a fresh bit of intellectual property. Ha, ah, now we're doing it. <laughs> oh, gosh. <clears throat> uh, Seriously, maybe. Lana? Uh, right now, I am I am so dead on collabs. <laughs> Which is why I claim it ten years in advance. I <laughs> uh, there's agrees. There's a dog out there who is waiting by my door, waiting for me to come out. It's like, please, Silver, collab with my master. She is the best. <laughs> I thought she was saying, give me food. <laughs> that too. He has food downstairs. Yeah, but uh, you can give more. <laughs> yes. My tum tum is the yum yum. He waits for me by the door because he knows he can't come in my room. Anyways. <laughs> uh, anyways, as for me, I like this episode. The interaction with Mod and Starlight here is just adorable. And also, just looking at their friendship bloom is so much fun. Having Mod oh, in Oh, Pony- yes, the friendshipping. Oh. <laughs> and having Mod in Ponyville, oh but adjacent God. to it is a nice touch. She's around, but she won't be the, in many episodes. But if someone would reference her, she'll be there. So this episode was good. I, I like it. Oh, one other thought, and don't worry, it's not it's not kinky this time. Mm-hmm. Would it be a fun episode to see how Maud and Trixie are getting along? Oh, yes. I would like that. I, I would like to see what the new dynamics they can pull off. Uh, who knows? They might get a scene where, haven't I met you somewhere before? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yes, I told you about the alicorn amulet that was located in this one town. It has a nice rock. <laughs> oh God, Maud, you're not helping. Are you kidding? That was a fun episode. The Return of Trixie. 
I I I agree. That was a fun episode, but Mod is not helping. Whenever she gives directions or helps someone, it always ends in some town or country that's getting mauled or getting dictated or something bad happens. What can you say? They just have that effect on the world. Oh yeah, true. Oh, that. My. Well, anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, we're going to take a quick little break from My Little Pony, and we're going to talk about power levels that are over 9,000. Oh, my gosh. Which is going to be a super time. Oh, wow. Not uh, for me. I won't be there. Oh, my. Well, anywho, <clears throat> I think that we might um, go look for seven mystical pearls that can grant us one wish if we ask for it. That's right. We're going to handle those balls. Oh, God, no. Uh, but anyway, next week we'll be uh, doing another Patreon sponsored video by Nemdragatorius. He wants us to discuss about Dragon Ball Super. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing next week. So anyway, um, talking about Patreon sponsored video, I would like to thank the Patreon supporters. I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Toilet Genesis, Nemdragatorius, uh, Starstream, and also Master of Lag. And, uh, one one more guy like this is a new addition to the patreon thank you people uh wow i i i i am bad with this name is well the name he wants me to say is this different than what it's here you know what give me a second and i'll yeah okay here we go jeffrey thank you man thank thank you for the support so if you like to be like this guy here also jeffrey do check us out on patreon.com slash mbs show. There's a dollar and five dollar tier. Uh, both are the same. You'll get full access to deleted contents, early access to the review and discussion podcast on the Patreon. So if you would like to do so or like to get a heads up on the review show, it's over there. But anyhow, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vakil. I am Musafa Hatsal. And we'll guys catch you next week for another amazing episode of the Ambition Reviews. See ya! Friendshipping! Bye boy! Oh no! <laughs> well, at least we know there ain't gonna be more Yu Gi Oh! Friendshippings. Oh, there will always be more Yu Gi Oh! Friendshippings. What you going on about, boy? Oh no. Friendship! The nuggets of friendship, you will have them. <laughs> <laughs>